So let's have a quick catch up of where we are on our project. So if you have a look at our storyboard at the moment, there's still a few outstanding things and we've just been working on the stats feature uh, and that's basically to for a user to actually look at a short URL and to work out how many times it's been accessed. And we've also included location to uh, show where it's from as well. So let's just have a quick check of that in production to see if it's actually working or not. And therefore, if we can actually uh, finish this story off. Uh, so let's go ahead over to the uh, production version of our app. Uh, let's just generate a new uh, Rick and Roll uh, short URL. So the idea is that we would send this to the user uh, and they would actually be able to uh, access it and be redirected uh, to the content. Uh, so that should be working okay and soon being redirected to the Rick Astley video. Uh, but the other side of it is for the stats is we want to be able to grab this short URL ID and then be able to view the stats of where it's been accessed from. Uh, so on rickandroll.me forward slash stats uh, forward slash that ID, we should find that the uh, stats are displaying as they were on our local version. But as you can see, uh, we are getting a 404 page uh, because that stats because that stats path hasn't actually been recognized by Nginx and we've just been served a 404 page. So that is a problem. We need to go over onto the server and fix that. So if we quickly skip over to our terminal, uh, I'm already logged on as the Rick and Roll user to our DigitalOcean droplet. Uh, and I'm inside of the sites available uh, folder, uh, which is inside of our Nginx uh, configuration here. Uh, so if you just navigate to there, and if we just uh, open up the rickandroll.me uh, file that's inside of there, I just need to put the uh, password in here. Okay, let's try again. So the problem we've got here is that any uh, files that are inside of this uh, first block inside the server, this location block here, uh, we're looking inside of our HTML folder uh, for forward slash stats. But then if we append anything onto that as well, uh, there aren't any files that match, then uh, we're going to get a 404. Uh, so there's a simple way to fix this in our configuration here. If you look at this line down here where we've got uh, this other location block, uh, we've got this try files directive uh, for Nginx to understand. And this basically says try and uh, parse the path uh, into something that you can recognize uh, inside of uh, this stats folder, which is why it's failing at the moment. So what we'll type in here, we'll use that try files directive and we'll copy the same sort of thing. So uh, the URI is a special uh, variable that's been passed in. So if we get URI or URI with a forward slash on the end, uh, then we're just going to redirect the user to the stats folder and then just to the index uh, HTML file, which has all of the JavaScript, which will do that splitting of the location path uh, and then ultimately actually go and get the data from the API. Uh, so if you don't understand that, that's fine. All we're doing here is adding a line to Nginx uh, to say that uh, if we get a request for the uh, short URL as uh, after stats, uh, we just want to redirect it to the index page and uh, load the app as normal. And let's not forget to put a forward slash onto there. Uh, so if we write the file and close that down, and then if we just uh, restart Nginx with system control, uh, restart Nginx, should restart the uh, Nginx server. And if we go back over to our web page and refresh it, uh, you should find now uh, that we've got the uh, stats loading, the stats app is loading. And of course, uh, we're actually sending uh, the request to get the data for the particular API. Uh, and you can see if we were to uh, access this uh, URL a few more times, Make sure it's on my clipboard again. Uh, that will populate uh, the redirect property that's referencing this particular short URL. So if we just go back here and refresh the page, you can see we get new entries as the uh, redirects occur and are updated in the database. So if we go back to our storyboard, um, we can pretty much uh, say that is uh, committed and uh, signed off. And of course, we've just tested it in the live environment as well. So we can say that that's live. So there are a couple of things left to do. And I've left this story about the short URL being redirected uh, for a while because we have actually implemented this quite a while ago, um, but we don't really have what we would consider a short URL. So uh, what I mean by that is on the actual app, when we generate a, a short URL to rickroll uh, one of your friends, uh, you can see you get this URL that you need to send them to do the redirect. And two things, it's not really very short because uh, it's rickandroll.me is the full domain. And the second thing is it's actually giving the game away in a little bit of a sense because uh, you can literally tell from the domain name what's going to happen uh, when you visit this particular URL. So what we're going to do over the next couple of videos is just to replace that rickandroll.me uh, domain inside of the short URL with another short domain with the purpose of uh, hiding the uh, intent of the short domain um, and also making it short. 
short as well. So we'll go through the process of setting up another domain uh, and replacing this as the, the actual link that you give out to people when you're generating a Rickroll URL. But we've got our app and our stats feature pretty much set up and running, uh, but we'll leave it there for this tutorial. So make sure you stay tuned for more web dev tips.